coach's face, Terry Zay, as he approaches us courtside after the Griffs win 75-50. It exactly wasn't in cruise control all the way through the second half. You about midway through it, you called the timeout when the lead was down to nine, got the club refocused, hit some big shots, and it started to swell from there. Yeah, you know, and I think it would have been in cruise control earlier had those layups not rolled out. You know, we had a bunch of really nice layups that were halfway down, I, and that would have really separated us. But I felt like when we missed those, and then it was at, at nine or seven, and I felt like we were like a little bit like, oh, whoa, what's going on? So I just settled down and let's, let's uh, get ourselves back to where we want to be and, and made some big hustle plays. You know, I thought Tiana made some really big hustle plays today for us and Porter got in there in the second half and she made a play by drawing a charge early in the second half which was really big um, for us you know when they were uh, I think it was our first possession and they got another foul on their big kid uh, so that was really good I thought Jazz was good today you know we went inside we felt like there was some times when uh, they couldn't guard us down there and then when the one girl had two uh, Bethia had two, and we just went right at her, and Jazz had a nice little lefty layup on her, and then Lanier got some big buckets for us. I think those are huge baskets for us. And really some grit on the defensive end. I know you wanted to pressure the perimeter. How much did that disrupt everything that St. Pete's wanted to do today? Yeah, I thought the, the, the pressure, and I thought the switch, we did a bunch of switching today that we usually don't do, and I, I thought that really stalled them a little bit. Uh, there was a stretch where we let them get off the bounce, uh, off their ball screens and get, get to the basket because of our angles of our recoveries and our hedges weren't really good, and that hurt us. But once we got that sorted back out, it was pretty good. How much was today a team win? A big win. And I, I felt like in warm-ups, like when we were doing pregame, like they're they're like they're exhausted. They're mentally exhausted. Just the, you know, it's finals and all those things right now, and, and they're really tired. And so I told them we just got to muster it here for 40, right? We got to get ourselves together, muster, give each other energy for 40, and and get a get a nice max uh, sweep weekend. You know, those are hard to get, and to get a nice max sweep weekend to start the year is really good. You will start two and zero, oh, and you mentioned some of the mental. Uh, strain, strain that was on this team coming into it. Down the last couple of minutes, though, uh, what a big lift. You saw some freshmen get on the floor for the first time this season. 11 out of the 12 that you put on the floor today played, but also the reaction from the teammates, even a couple of alums that were in the building today when players like Abby Schwenk dropped into her first bucket and Sarah Cooley hit that jumper off the baseline, and then uh, Celia got to the free throw line and hit both of her free throws. Those kind of moments really start to build momentum. Exactly, and, and you see the alums appreciating it like the team appreciates it because they're, they're not in the rotation, not because they're not playing well. It's just the, the numbers and, 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 and the rotation, it's tough to get everybody in, and so they appreciate, they know how hard they work, they know how good of players they are, and they appreciate them getting in there, and certainly scoring their first baskets. I mean, the two that were here, Jamie and Courtney, they understand what that's like to score your first basket. And the team supporting them. And I thought when they stepped in there, it was like they had been playing the whole game. And that's sometimes tough when you, you're you sitting watching and with three, four minutes to go, you're going to go in the game. And it's it's difficult. But I thought we did a really nice job. We flowed our motion and got shots out of our motion with that group, which was really good. Griffs are victorious today, 75-50. Uh, now you're looking at a relatively quick turnaround for a week that's usually very quiet from a program perspective. You've got the rescheduled game on Wednesday, and then you got Youngstown State coming in next Saturday. Yeah, exactly. So we'll take, obviously, we're going to take tomorrow off, and then on Tuesday we're just going to do some basketball workouts. They're coming in in different groups during the day because they got a lot of studying. Try to get a mini practice in Wednesday. i got to play a game on Thursday uh, because of the snow reschedule. So it is a tougher week than normal. And, and this is a, a group that really cares about the academics, and there's a lot of stress on that. So we try to keep practices stress-free, almost like a workout. Coming in, get some shots up, mindless stuff. You don't have to think just like, a, like you're getting a workout in and then go back to, to study. And then, obviously, on Wednesday, we got to get ready for the game a little bit. Big second half for the Griffs today, outscoring St. Pete's 45-26. It leads to a 3-3 three and three record and a 75-50 victory for Terry Zay and the Griffs. Congratulations. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you.